this week, we'll start talking about um, database. So right now, our data is stored in the server, right? Like uh, uh, every time we're going to send a request from the client side to the server side. And then the server side will provide the required data or required command, uh, either to update, update data or just sending back the data or just delete the current data and then send a response to the client. And then the client will using the data to display to the user. And uh, today we'll start, start talking about database. So we're adding one more step to the to our um, development. So we are sending a request to the server, and uh, um, instead of like a directly sending back a response from the server to client, when the server receives the request from the client, the server will send another request to the database, and saying like, uh, okay, the user is asking me to provide the data about like the user and please give me the bad data. And then the database will give the data to the server. And then the server will give the data to the client. So we're adding one more step here. Um, in the real world, the, usually the, the clients, the server, and database, they are three different geolocations. Like, I mean, it starts in different places. And each time when your uh, client client side code is sending a, a, a request to a server server machine, and the server we are going to sending a request to the to a database machine, say, saying like a, I want the database, I want the data from there, and then the, the, the database starting sending a response to the server, and when the server receiving receiving the uh, receive the, uh, the the data, and then the data will respond to the client side. So it's kind of like three, three different places and two, two tra uh, transmissions here. Okay, send your request to a server, server send your request to a database, and database sending back a response. So um, there are two kinds of uh, database we have. One is a uh, NoSQL. Another one is SQL. Uh, today we'll start talking about uh, NoSQL. It's uh, much more easier than SQL, and uh, directly like database itself is really easy. And NoSQL is is much easier than SQL. So um, we'll talk about SQL like uh, uh, next week or two weeks later. So this NoSQL is really easy. Like I already know those uh, objects in the JavaScript, right? Like. Um, we can we have a person, the person has first name, has last name, has username, and password, or has a email that is an object in, in JavaScript. And NoSQL is, is really easy, it's just that it just directly save the object in the database. Like please save this user in my database. Please save, save this website in my database. Like a website will have a name, have a description, have a developer ID. Just directly save, save the whole thing in the, in the database. And when the uh, server sending a request through the database saying like, uh, please give me this user with this ID and then the database is just looking for this object in my database and sending back this resp response, sending back this, this object. So there's no function, it's just um, labeled. Like uh, the database itself has some predefined functions there, like allows you to send, allows you to, to send a request to, to it, like a, like a find user by ID and then it will be looking for this user by this ID and then send it back to you. Mm -hmm. They have some predefined functions there. You don't have to define some uh, any function by yourself. All you need to do is send your request to, to them, and they will do anything for you, like a, uh, including like the formal steps, uh, four, four kind of methods I talked about like uh, many times, like the code. Like uh, the the database itself, always like uh, the core of the database is have like, these four things, like the create new new item, read read current data, update the current data or today's current data, right? Like the database have already defined those functions for you, so you can just use them to create new stuff, to read, read the current stuff, or just update or delete. Um, so all we need to do is send your request to them and ask them to, to, to do those things for us. 
So let's see how we're gonna do it for the NoSQL. So I already put the uh, the uh, slides on our website in our wiki. So this for MongoDB, and uh, here is a place you can uh, where you can download the MongoDB. All right. I think I give the wrong. Oh yes, uh, that's correct one. She linked to our uh, wiki about how to install it. Uh, I think it's yeah. I have next updated this 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 wiki right now because we uh, changed it changed it to another place. Um, no single database is a uh, it's not a relational database like by relational database we'll mention it later. Okay, just to let you know that it's not a relational database. Uh, for relational database, it splits the structure and the. Uh, 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 data into tables like uh, this is what a uh, relational database does. Like in a NoSQL, it's not a relational database, so we just directly store the object into a database. It store objects, and uh, it use a friendly format to store data. It's JSON format. By JSON format, it just really like a just a JavaScript object. Okay, just directly store the JavaScript object into there, and there is no schema. Okay, and uh, it's just really simple thing that just store we directly store object into a database and asking the uh, data from it. So let's just start uh, to to hosting a, a Mongo database locally, and uh, we're gonna like uh, listening our request and we're gonna start sending requests to them. So the, we already I already installed the, the the database the Mongo DB database on each computer in this lab. So. Uh, before we start, we need to do one thing like is go to the uh, C drive. Go to the C drive. Uh, it's right here. So we're going to create a folder called data. Like I already created here. It's just called data. And inside here, you have another table, uh, another folder, empty folder called DB. You just you know right click here in, in your C drive, right click, click new folder, and then call it data. Okay, I already created one, so I'm not going to create that one. And in the data, you're gonna create another one called DB, like a new folder and called DB. Okay, I already created one, so it's, this is a new one. So like uh, this is the default place like the MongoDB will use. Like it will use this folder to store all your data here. Okay, you can change that uh, by some command, but I'm not going to mention it here. You can just go visit to the the MongoDB's uh, website to take a look. Okay, this is uh, like a MongoDB website right so just go to a C first step is go to a C drive create a folder called data and and uh, inside data create a, a new folder called DB right that's going to be a default place for the MongoDB to store your data and in order to to start it it's really simple so uh, you need to open a uh, Either a git bash or a command Windows command uh, command uh, window here like a PowerShell or a git bash. Both of them are working. So all you to do is just say Mongo D. Put Mongo D here. Uh, it's not too small. Let's make use a git bash here. Big bash is is I can change the font of it easily. Right. I just say. Mongo D here. I hit enter. It's just going to uh, print a couple of lines here, and uh, it's basically let's take it, make it smaller. I'm um, making it bigger. Uh, let's see. Yes, just saying Mongo DB is starting, and uh, PID equal to 8744 port equal to 20 uh, like 27017. The default port is a two seven o i seven. It seems like like a, I, we already put our server on. We, we put our server on a local host thirty one hundred, and we put our uh, client on local host forty two hundred. The the default port for the MongoDB is on two seven o one seven. Like it's uh, different different uh, uh, port to it. Like when I when we try to send a request to the to the to the to the database instead of like sending to local source thirty one hundred we're going to send the server going to send our request to the uh twenty seven 
017. Like it's going to send a request to, to this port. So this is the default port for the for the Mongo database. Okay, so after it, it, it is starting, like uh, waiting for connection on port 27, or you can just leave it as there, you don't have to change anything. And next step, we're going to uh, create an, a new one, another one, like um, we can open another git bash here. And this one going to, you know, to connect with, uh, like this one is waiting for the connection, right? This one is waiting for the connection uh, on 27.017. Then we're going to connect it from here. So let's just say Mongo. The other one we call Mongo D, and this one just say Mongo. Hit enter. You see, okay, this one is, is printing something, saying someone is connected with me, okay? And uh, we're now in the Mongo database. Like, uh, so we, we have like, some, some simple commands we can use here. I already put out in there our, um, in our here, like uh, this one, Mongo D, and this is what you're going to see. Uh, after you pre, pre, uh, do the Mongo D, and you see the PID and the port, and the next page, you just do a Mongo, connect to the Mongo database as a client. Right, it's just telling you like a uh, access is already in access, something like that, and then like uh, we can start doing some development here. So first command here you can do is show DBs. It's showing the current databases we have, like in the DB folders. You can put a deep, like a different number of, uh, no matter how many databases you you want. Like we have, well, I, I maybe for this project I have a database. For another project I have another database. Like each database is going to uh, do the different works, right? Like for the our assignment, it's made called the WebMaker. So we can have a database for WebMaker. And in your own project, we're going to create another database. Make called like maybe a final project database. And we're going to separate the data uh, between the database from the, uh, between the different projects, right? So let's first try the show DBs. See if it's going to show us something. Show DBs. It's saying like, a, okay, those are the current databases you have. You have the admin database, you have a config database, you have local database, and you have management database. Uh, the management database is I used to test our uh, M symbol assign, uh, M symbol website, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, these three are uh, predefined, pre-created uh, uh, databases for you. You don't have to use them. So we are going to create a new, completely new one to use. Okay, so in, uh, in order to create a new uh, database, we just say use and give a name to it. And when, if the, the name is already existed, we are, we are going to switch it to that database. If not, the MongoDB will create a database for us, then switch us to there. So, like. Okay. To create a database, uh, for example, we are going to call it a web uh, web maker, right? Like we just use web maker. Saying switched to DB web maker, right? That means well, like okay, it switched us to the web maker database. And then we can check next website. I'm going to show you like how to do different command, keep different method here, like to create stuff, to read stuff, update stuff, or delete stuff, right? So the the first one is show collections. Um, each kind of data is named collections in MongoDB. For example, user is a collection, website is another collection, pages is a connection, a widget is another collection. Like a different kinds of data, we call it collections in the MongoDB. So if we try the show collections here, show collection, uh, show collections, sorry, show collections. It's giving me nothing because I don't have any data stored in this database, right? It's, it's completely empty. Um, so let's create a database right now. Let's, let's insert some data there. So the, 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 the way you create something, like it's called insert, it's called db and dot and with a collecting name and dot insert, right? So let's get, let, let me give you an example. So like uh, right now we don't have any connection, but I can just directly use the insert to create a connection, like db. 
uh, not TV, uh, yeah, TV, TV, the user. That means I want to create uh, uh, some data in the user collection, like TV user dot insert. I want to insert some data there, the parentheses. And what do you want to insert? You just put it into the parentheses. Okay. Um, I, let's, let's change, not, not use the git bash here. Git bash is not like a MongoDB friendly. Let's use a command here. Command prompt. This one is much better. Uh, let me see if I can put the font bigger. Um, Probably font. It's still not big enough. Let's big it. I can go. Okay. So let's do a Mongo connected to the Mongo database. All right. Let's do it again. So use uh, web, web, let's say show, show, collect, uh, show database, show DBs. I, I, I don't have uh, that database. Let's just uh, cr create a one. Use WebMaker. Switch it to WebMaker. And then we're going to do uh, db.user.insert. Like create some user data here. So in order to create some user data, we just need to like uh, put the object inside the parentheses. Like this is this is, this is for, for for inside this parentheses, just put the object here. Like a user will have a username. It might be a uh, uh, student. And come on, I just have a password. Student, right? And I may have a. Uh, Let's say they have an email, uh, student at gmail.com. And you can have a, have, a, have a first name, right? It's a test. And last name, uh, test. Okay, this is my first object. Just hit enter. Tell me, write results. Like an inserted one, right? That means like we inserted one data there. So if we try to show collections on, again, show collections. It's saying, okay, you have one collection called user here. And uh, like uh, we can, we can then check about like uh, what we stored there. So, so next page here is telling you how are you going to show that, okay? It's called db.databaseName.find. Like going to show like whatever you have in that collections. So it's just uh, db the user the fight. So it's finding all the data you have there. Here is the data. It's created ID automatically generated one one ID for me. Don't need, don't need to worry about that. And username equals student. Password equals student. Email is equal to, uh, equal to student at gmail.com. First name test, last name test. This is what we have in the database. And uh, if you see that, that means that your data is already stored in the database, okay? And uh, this is also the way, like uh, when, we, when the user sending the, uh, uh, like sending a request to the server saying, I want the data for, for the student, for all the students. And then the server will send a file to the, to, the, to the database. And the database will give this data to the server. And the server can give this data to the client, okay? Um, this is not like a, like a really easy to read. So MongoDB have one more uh, method for us. It's DB the user the file the pretty. It's gonna like make it like a more pretty, like a printed like in this way. It's easy for you to read. You don't have to put it in, in, in like in the when you when you when, when you like a, uh, when you're trying to when you're trying to send in a request from a server to the database. You don't have to add the pretty there because it's just for human to read easier. Okay. Let's try adding another uh, another uh, st st uh, another user here, like username. Uh, let's edit it. Uh, username equal to uh, Bob. Password equal to Bob. Email Bob at gmail dot com. And the first name Bob. Last name like uh, Wonder. I don't care. Okay. So let's hit enter. It's saying like uh, instead of another one. Let's try to find it again. Find the pretty. Let's say we have two items here. Like we have student and we have Bob. 
Right, we have two items here. And we can, uh, instead of finding all of them, we can just find a, 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 a specific one here. In the find, you can state here, I want to find the one with username is equal to Bob. And find it pretty, please. Uh, did I misspell something? Find username Bob. Oh, I'm missing. I'm missing a uh, quotation marks here. Say the Bob is not close to the quotation marks. Say I'm getting the the, the username uh, the the whole user with username equal to Bob. Or I can find uh, someone with email is equal to uh, student at gmail.com then it will find the student for me let's just db the user to find and find the specific the user you want or find specific items you want it doesn't have to be a user it might be a website like I want to find the website with a uh, with a name equal to post one equal to name equal to blog it can find this for you and give your data to the server and the server can use that data sending it to the client now let's see what let's see what else we have we have fight, we have fight pretty, and uh, we have a uh, remove. We have remove here. db uh, user dot remove. So db dot user dot remove. If I just put a uh, empty bracket in here, it's going to remove everything we have in this collections. Let's try it. Hit enter. It's saying remove two remove two items. So let's try to uh, show collections. We still have the user collection, but let's see if I have anything inside it. DB the user the fight. We don't have anything showing. Okay, it's totally empty. We removed everything. Let's add them back. Um, this is any student. This any Bob. Okay, let's see it again. DB the user the fight the pretty. Here we have the student and the bobs here. So that's for remove. And you can remove a specific one, like saying db the user the remove. And in the bracket you can say I want to remove uh, the username is equal to student. I want to remove this one. It just removed one. If you try db five pretty again, it's only have one item left there. Okay, you can just re remove the students you don't like. So let's see what else we can do. We have update. We can update the 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 item inside there, right? So let's try it. db the user the update. The update takes two items. Like in the first one, you tell, tell him like which object I want to update. I want to the update the one with the username equals to Bob. I want to update this one. And I have a comment here. What do you want to update it to? Like I want to change it to another object. I want to change it to with username equals to Alice. Uh, password equals to Alice. Okay? Then, then let's hit enter here. Let's see what we have here. db the user the fight the pretty. Wait, the the the, the Bob is disappear. As here it is comes a, a new item and we only have the username and the password. It doesn't even have a have, have email, have anything else. Cause you just update that one. Let's try to update Anis again. db the user the update username is equal to Anis. And uh, we want to update you to uh, something that can only have a first name equals to Alice. And uh, well, we have two here. Uh, last name equal to hello. Okay, let's all change it to like that. Uh, I think I'm missing a bracket after the, this one here. Yeah, try right here. Uh, retros, okay, found one match and uh, uh, modified one. 
okay we don't uh, absort this one zero so let's try it again tv the user find pretty let's say you have uh, the new user change to first name equal to alice last name equal to hello right next update allows you to update the current data there so and we have some uh oh no that, that's it so like i already showed you the, the four basic command here like how you're going to create a new item it's just the db the the uh, user the insert or db the website the insert allows you to insert a new data and for read it's just db the user the fight fight uh, gonna return you the data you want it's either fight all, all things or find the specific ones here and we'll have also have the update right we can update the current data to another one and we have the remove going to allows you to remove the, the items there 